Dr. Rao, I wanted to ask you, uh, Pegasus Timmy trial was released uh, yesterday. What do you think are the clinical implications of, of this trial? So obviously it's a heroic effort. I think it's a terrific study. I think taken in context with the DAPT trial that was published and presented at the American Heart Association, I think it's clear that what we're entering here is really the post-PCI era. And what I mean by that is, for the last five years, we've really been obsessed with PCI-related outcomes, stent thrombosis, for example. But now, DAPT and Pegasus tell us that the window of risk extend well beyond the PCI, and what we're really preventing are non-stent-related outcomes. Mm -hmm. So the Pegasus trial, I think, shows a very clear reduction in MI in patients who are uh, you know, one to three years out from myocardial infarction. The challenge, of course, is that, as expected, it is a more potent antiplatelet agent, there is more bleeding. So, as always, and this has been true ever since the dawn of antithrombotic therapy, we're always dealing with the balance between the ischemic benefit and the bleeding risk, and this is really no different from that. So uh, do you think the patients that have had MI uh, two, th two, three years ago and they have finished um, their aspirin Plyvex course or like any, any two uh, dual antiplatelet agents, should we go back to those patients and put them on one of the other antiplatelet agents, say for example, Brilenta? I think that's a terrific question. And that's probably the question all of us are going to be wrestling with. What I'd like to see, and I don't think we have an answer to your question directly yet, what I'd like to see is some type of you know, risk assessment of these patients so we know that there are certain characteristics associated with an increased risk of recurrent myocardial infarction. My guess is that initially, many of us will look at these high-risk patients and say, you know, you may be a candidate for additional uh, dual antiplatelet therapy with ticagrelor because you're at high risk for having a recurrent event. Most of those patients will probably be those who are just finishing their one year of DAPT after an ACS. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we may be switching them uh, to either the 60 milligram dose if it gets approved uh, or continuing them on the 90 milligram dose. Hmm. Now, um, you know, cost is a big issue with American health system, and um, most of these trials, they look at the safety and the efficacy endpoint, um, but no one looks at the cost right. effectiveness. Um, so what do you think in long term, how is this going to, I mean, I have patients in clinic uh, who are uninsured and they cannot afford one year of Brilenta. So what do you think, how is this going to play out? Yeah, that's a really, really important consideration. We know that um, not only are patients who are at lower socioeconomic status unable to afford these kinds of newer medications, but they also have other high-risk behaviors as well, and they are at very, very high risk for recurrent events. This is a very complicated issue, and I think that um, I'm hopeful that industry partners with us, because as the accountable care organization kind of model starts spreading throughout the country, we have to realize that all of us are going to be responsible for what happens to those patients after they leave the hospital. And I think in, it would be in industry's best interest to try and work with us to figure out a way to get the patients the drugs that they need, because ultimately that is the market that they're serving. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Rao. Uh, for more news, go on to youtube.com slash fits on the go. Thank you.